So we can start with the uh, presentation of the, the fourth part of the project. It will be about a new tool, uh, the last one that you will need to learn uh, a bit to use it for this part. And um, so uh, looking at the timeline, we can see now that we are in week nine, uh, the week uh, just before the Easter break. And then you will have three uh, weeks to complete this task and uh, give a presentation in week 11 about this okay and uh, you will see how you could you, you will be able to implement the results that you get from this uh, project part and into the MLP model I will explain it to you after so yes so this is our the, 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 this, this is like the channel overview of the project with the different uh, deliverables with the different presentations so we are here now we, uh, and the week level would be as I told you the, the presentation day um, and yes, we have done basically all the other, the three uh, boxes uh, around it. So um, as, as you know, uh, the, current, the current campus of the EPFL basically um, supplies uh, the, the heat demand to the different buildings of the EPFL using two uh, uh, heat pumps, which are using the, uh, the water from the lake as a heat source and uh, also two gas turbine in a combined heat and power unit, uh, which are used uh, when actually the, the heat demand of the EPFL is extremely high, so they activate these uh, two units. Um, what we have to do here, basically, is to model uh, this unit, so the gas turbines and uh, the heat pumps, and uh, to use real uh, data to, um, into the model to, re to validate those data and calculate some performances of, uh, of these uh, models. Um, and you will do that using a data validation reconciliation software, which is called uh, Benzimal. So these are the, the flow sheets uh, of, the, of, the two, the, of the two models, right? So the first one is the gas supine. Uh, as you can see, there is a compressor, and then there is a combustion chamber and a gas turbine, right? With a, with a heat exchanger at the end to record the heat. And, um, and this is the double stage uh, heat pump. As you will see in the, in the files that we provide to you, the, the gas turbine is already there, so you will not need to, to do it, but you need to understand it um, and probably activate uh, some parts of it. So it's not, uh, I mean, it's there, but it's not working at the moment, so you will need to activate it. And this one, basically, you don't have it. You will need to build it uh, from scratch, from zero, basically. Watch back. Uh, OK, so um, we give you a folder, um, which is called Project 4. And inside the folder, you will have the, uh, the second point. You will have the, the, valley, uh, the valley model, right? With a lot of uh, things to still be implemented inside. But the, the model how it is uh, given now it, it is working, and then you will have like a, an, another uh, set of different uh, files which are all the refrigerant data for the double stage e pump, right? So uh, you will have uh, one CSV file for each refrigerant. There should be like fourteen refrigerants, so you will have a list of fourteen refrigerants. Um, the, so as I told you, the goal of the, the, the goals of this uh, part is to being able to create uh, thermodynamics models. Um, using flow sheeting tools, which uh, like beds in Bali, and also um, you will need to choose two different refrigerants on, on the list that we provide to you, and uh, use the models in order to reconcile the values and the measurements for each uh, of the refrigerants you, you select, right? And then you will you you have to you have to be able to calculate the performance of the of the unit. So, for example, the performance of the double stage heat pump in terms of efficiency and coefficient of performance, and uh, the thermal efficiency also of the gas turbine, because those uh, basically the coefficient of performance and the thermal efficiency will be uh, the, the the values that you will need to uh, to put inside your MIP model. Okay. And then um, you will need to choose uh, the two different refrigerants, as I told you already, and uh, you will need to uh, justify your choice and say why you selected those uh, refrigerants, why they, you think they are better than the others, this kind of thing. Okay. 
but we provide you a really detailed uh, project description uh, as usual uh, for for this part as well and so you would just just need to follow the instruction there so as i told you already bets in bali is a, a question based data validation and reconciliation software uh, basically you from you can just uh, drag and drop units inside uh, a flow sheet right connect a different unit to to each unit you have some equation that which are uh, connected to, to the unit that can be for example if you put data exchanger you will have the mass balances equation you will have the energy balances equation this kind of thing and even more complicated uh, performance equations and uh, basically by dragging, uh, dragging and dropping all these uh, units and connecting you can build like complicated uh, systems i would say more more complicated system and you can like uh, try to model whatever whatever you want okay any kind of industrial process basically basically so uh, why it is uh, a really good uh, tool because uh, so as you know, every kind of sensor that is installed uh, nowadays in any kind of uh, industrial plant basically is affected by two different kind of errors. So you have systematic errors and random errors. So the first one is more due normally to calibration. And, uh, and normally this, this error estimates uh, the, the measurement bias. While the second uh, part, the second error is uh, random and uh, normally is not correlated to the to the uh, previous uh, sample that you have of, of, of that sensor so it's really random and it's really connected normally to the intrinsic sensor precision okay and then you have also other kind of factor that can impact on the measurement quality that can be for example the the location of the plant uh, the instabilities that you can you can have in the plant right and the shutdowns of the plant this kind of thing so, uh, what uh, a data reconciliation problem basically is just uh, an optimization problem, okay? In which you set this, uh, you have this uh, objective function, right? Which basically is just the minimization of the sum of the difference between the measurement uh, value and the true value, right? The true value here is what is the reconciled value uh, squared and weighted by the uh, the variance, right? Sigma here is the standard deviation of the of the sensor, and you sum over basically all the sensors that you have. So you have to minimize this this value, and and this objective function, of course, is constrained, is subjected to uh, the the equality constraints and um, inequality constraints, which are basically all the the equations of your of your model, it can be mass balances, energy balances, performance equation, or whatever you have. And the term here inside the objective function is called uh, penalty, uh, and because it quantifies the penalty uh, of each sensor. And so, basically, at the end, uh, what you need to, study, to, to, to solve is a nonlinear uh, problem, right? Which is stated by this equation, because the constraints uh, are nonlinear. And uh, you will have uh, to minimize the over, overall uh, uh, correction of. All the sensors, right? So uh, now we can like uh, we I put some screenshots of the of the how how the software lo uh, looks like. Uh, so basically here, when you open Bensimali, you will have something like this. The the first thing you need to do is like to activate it and enter the uh, editing mode. So basically at the top there you have like a sort of uh, red segment. You just need to click there uh, to uh, unlock it. And then you will uh, be able to start using uh, Bali, right? Here in the in the left side, you will have a, a many drop-down list in which you will need to uh, first of all like um, identify which are the compounds of your of your system and uh, define them, right? And then there will be the thermodes also in that list. So the thermodes is basically um, a thermode is basically a compound. Or a mixture of, com of of compounds, okay? And you will need to define once you have all the compounds, you will need to define the thermodes and uh, create the mixture that you will need, okay? Um, and then you have also a section in which you can define already the reactions. So, for example, 
but probably this way you will not need to do it because like we give you our model uh, which the gas turbine is already inside so it means that the reaction of the of the gas turbine has been already defined and it will be like a combustion reaction okay so if you click here inside you will see already the the combustion inside it but normally when you want to add a new reaction just click there then add reaction and then you select the compounds that can like mix together uh, to create uh, another a chemical or whatever, okay? So uh, this is for the, the left uh, hand side of, the, of the, the first window that you, that you have when you open the tool. Uh, why in the, in the right part, you have the, basically the model, right? The structure of the model, you have different uh, uh, PFDs. So each, each block is a PFD. PFD is process flow diagram. I, I guess many of you already knows that, but some someone might uh, not know it. So, um, for example, here you will see a PFD for the heat pump, a PFD for the gas turbine, and then you will have PFD for the buildings because the buildings will uh, represent your demand. And then you will have like PFD in which you can put like some control unit that will set. Uh, the, the the different PFDs depending on the on the input that you give to the to the tool. Okay. So in any case, uh, when we have the different PFDs, and you can decide whether to run uh, the tool using all the PFDs or using only some of them, right? Or only running, or you can decide to run only one PFD. What you have to do here inside is like when you right click on one of the PFD, you will get this kind of window. Right? And you can select whether to put a PFD on, off, or out. When you put it on, basically it means that it's used and it's actually working. When you put it off, it means that the PFD, it's, uh, a, I think it's there, but yes, uh, the, the PFD is there, but it's like shut it down, right? So basically the system knows that there is something there, but it's not working at the moment. While if you put it out, it means that uh, it's it's completely ignored by uh, by the tool, and then you will add streams, of course, uh, which are really important. You need for each stream, you will need to define the thermod that you defined before, right? And the streams are those element that uh, allows you the con to connect like two different units or even two different uh, PFD. So now we can like I put here some of the units that you have uh, available in the in the tool. So uh, that probably are the only units you will need to use for this part of the project. But in any case, okay. Uh, so in the heat exchanger, when you define a heat exchanger, of course you have always uh, you always have to define at least one inlet stream, which is a material stream, because you have different kind of stream, right? You have material stream which are like uh, basically compounds inside it. So it's uh, always, there is always a thermod associated to a, a material stream. And then you have mechanical stream, for example, the stream that are needed in a, in a, gas, in a turbine or in a compressor, right? And then uh, you, you will have like heat streams, which are the stream needed, for example, in this case, in a heat exchange. So here, uh, when you define a heat exchange, you will always need to define an inlet material stream, an outlet material stream, and uh, Q2 in this case is a uh, uh, heat stream, okay? And uh, in this case, we are talking about a, tip, a particular uh, heat exchanger that is called SATVA. This is the name of the unit, uh, which is basically uh, telling you that uh, the condition at, at the outlet of, of the heat exchanger, uh, is, the condition is saturation, basically. So the, the the compounds, uh, the thermod is in saturated condition at the outlet. Okay. So, and there are different ways. So, if you use the sat valve, for example, you can uh, you decide you have a stream here, and you decide uh, since you know that it has to be saturated because you're using a, a, a unit that is made for that. Okay. So you can decide whether to, to select uh, this thermod and say, okay, this is a thermod that to me is uh, vapor, right? So you can uh, you select the thermod and you say it's in vapor state, right? Or you say, okay, this is a, a thermod that uh, is in the liquid vapor state, but in that case, you, you need, for example, to, um, to say which is the vapor fraction, okay? So it depends how you want to define it. You have a different way, but 
always trying to uh, use a unit that is reasonable. Uh, but when you don't know, you can always check into the Bali help uh, uh, function uh, and you will get the list of the different uh, units and how you should use them, which are the equation associated to them, and this kind of thing. And then you have another kind of uh, heat exchanger, which is really more general, which is called TEX1. And um, it's more flexible here, but since it's more flexible, you have to define uh, more, more things. For example, for example, pressure drops here. In, when you open this kind of uh, unit, you will have this window. And here, you will have to set, uh, if you have uh, different, uh, the, the pressure difference that, that this variable, you have uh, to select, like, say that it's zero if you assume that the pressure drop is zero in the heat exchanger. Then you have uh, the compressor. The compressor. Uh, we, you have actually only one unit for this, and it's called uh, combo. Uh, okay, but then you will see, and then you have uh, one valve, different valves actually, but this is the one you will use. Uh, then you you can see here, for example, that when you for if you have a compressor, right? Uh, this is the uh, like the, the, the window associated to the compressor. You can say here that in the general tab, uh, you can find uh, a list of equations that you want to activate uh, for that unit. In this case, all the, all the equations available for the compressor are, are, are activated and used. Otherwise, you can only, for example, decide whether to use uh, pressure equation or an energy and mass balances equation, or whatever you want, but you will see it by using it. And then you have other uh, units, for example, LV val, uh, which is uh, a separator unit. Then you have BBX val, uh, which is a black box unit. Normally, black box units are used when you don't know exactly what's happening in a certain point. You want to satisfy only a certain set of equations, for example, mass balances. And then you put some uh, streams entering the, the unit and some streams going out, and then it satisfies uh, the calculates the mass balances and satisfy the mass balances in the validation problem, okay? And inside the black box, you can do also many other things. For example, you have a tab in which uh, you can like um, put flex code. A flex code is um, basically um, a, a, a program, a short program that uh, performs some uh, tasks that of course, you have to code, and it's using a language that actually is built in inside uh, Bali, okay, which is kind of uh, similar to Fortran. And then you have other kind of, uh, but you will see that I don't, I don't even know if you will use the black box, but you will see. Uh, and then you have like cardfold unit, which other kind of special unit. Uh, that can help you, like help your uh, problem, your system to converge when there are some problem. Because Valley like try to solve all these equations simultaneously, right? So it means that sometimes, especially when the the starting uh, guess, the starting values of your equation are like kind completely wrong, it, it creates a lot of problem in the in the, com in, in the convergence, and it, you don't get a, a solution. So what this uh, tell, uh, can allow you is basically to uh, try to converge, uh, to help the solver to converge. So it, this is just uh, breaking the linking equation constraint, but you will see. I don't even know if you will need it. Probably you will need it in, in the EPUM, yes. So you will learn how to use it. And then you have uh, the reactors. For example, this uh, is a path for a reactor, and then you have uh, 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 RC uh, t reactor. Uh, for example, when, when you have uh, a reactor, you click right click on the reactor, then you will have this window, right? In this window, you will have to select the reactions that you want the reactor to perform. So, for, for example, if here you go uh, to reaction tab and you select the re uh, reaction one, it means that this is the reaction that will be used, okay? So you can see it in the gas turbine model that we gave to you that inside the combustion chamber you will have combustion reactor here. And then, okay, so this is uh, this was uh, just a short explanation of some units that you can use. And then here, uh, how to run the model. 
So basically, in the in the top left, you have the run button. You just have to click on that, and then you will uh, this window uh, will pop up, and then. Here you can decide what to run of the model. So, for example, you can decide whether to run a single PFD or uh, to run only one unit, right? And here in the drop-down list, you can select uh, which PFD to run or which unit to run. Or if you select main, it means that everything will run, okay? Or the PFD. And then you will have here uh, another section which is about the files you want to use when, when you run it. So basically, this is the input uh, file. When you when you write something here, it means that Valium will look for this file. In the current directory, it will look for day one uh, uh, day one dot txt file, in which you will uh, have the list of uh, of the measurements. Okay, and we use uh, this file to this measurement file to to solve the problem. If you don't put anything, basically it will use the the default values that you will need you you have to define once uh, you you build your system. So, for example, if you put um, a unit, right, you will need to define a tag. For example, uh, if you put a, com a compressor, you need to define the, the the pressure ratio between the inlet and outlet. And when you define the pressure ratio, you will need to define also the the default values, which is the the, the first guess value that the software you, is using. You will need to define accuracy, but you will see it. You, I mean, you will learn it. Um, and then uh, you have other options that you can select, right? Whether to generate some additional report, whether to allow for more iteration, uh, or whether to use this solver. Actually, this is essential. Always put it on. Here is not on other, but it's really well, important. You always have to use it. Um, okay, so this is the kind of uh, CSV file that we provide to you. So for, for each refrigerant, you will have something like this. Right? Um, so this means that each column is a, is a measurement. So you will have, at the, at the top, you have the different tags, right? It's important that this tag also will be inside the model because when you run uh, the, the the model, right, you say which file he has to look in, right, and uh, the tag that you're using in that file should be, of course, the same that you have inside the model. Otherwise, it doesn't find the connection between the the input file and actually the model. Right. So um, you will have this kind of uh, CSV files. So each each column is a is a measurement with a measurement tag, and each line actually is a is 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 a data set. It means that um, actually in this case each line represents one model. That's why you have twelve lines, right? And that's why you have zero here, because you see that the eating long, which is actually the the eating the money zero in summer. Okay. But here you have an explanation of the different type, uh, different measurement that you have. So um, what the, the, the day one uh, dot txt file, which is your input file, has, has to have uh, this, this structure here, uh, I'll put here. So basically, um, on the left, the left column is the list of the, all the measurements, okay, with the, with the, with the tag. So, for example, here you have LP to heat exchanger seven. So it's the connection between this unit and a heat exchanger, and it's actually a mass flow. So at the end of the tag, you always have which kind of tag it is. So mass flow, pressure, temperature. Okay, and then you have another column, uh, which is about the measurement. So this is the measured uh, value coming from the sensor, and then you have the accuracy. So this is the accuracy of uh, the sensor. Right. If you have a minus sign here, it means that it's a percentage accuracy. If you don't have minus sign, it means that it's a, a absolute uh, accuracy. Right. Uh, or if you have CST uh, like that, it means that it's a constant value. So it's not a measurement. It will be used just as a constant, and will be not uh, the value will not be reconciled. Or if you put off, it means that uh, this is an unknown and it's not used like a measurement, but it would be calculated by the software. Okay. 
And then at the bottom, you can define other kind of uh, options. Uh, for example, here you can define the cutoff for the mass flows, the cutoff for volume flows, and you can uh, def define also uh, whether to store your output from the software. In this case, it means that the, the output will be stored in the in a in a file that is called uh, 365 uh, results.txt. Okay, and will be stored in the same. And data tag is another option, for example, that is telling you that uh, in, the, in, the, in the output file, he has to use the same tag of the input file. And actually show the tag. And uh, the last column, uh, sorry, I forgot, is just the unit of measurement of the different tags. This is an example of output. So uh, basically, in the input, you have only the measured. Uh, value in the in the output basically you have the same list of tags right with the this is the measurement this is the accuracy that you provided and this is actually the reconciled and validated value and this is another kind of accuracy which you, which is normally you don't care about that but it's calculated a posteriori it means uh, that it's once you reconcile the value you can calculate a new accuracy and suggest it uh, to the user as a new accuracy for the for that measurement okay and then uh, the last slide. Uh, this is how you can like run uh, value from another uh, tool or another, uh, for example, from MATLAB. Um, what you need to do is just to create uh, a file that has the extension dot uh, and in this in this file you will need to um, say just write at the top inside the file at the top. Uh, which is the, the model that you want to run. In this case, it's just test.dls. And then, which is the PFD that you want to run of this file? In this case, main. It means you run everything. And then you can define the option. So you to define the option, you just say dash, and then the name of the option, htm. It means that it will provide new additional report in HTML uh, extension. right? Uh, or if you want to activate SQP solver, you would need to write dash uh, SQP, for example. Okay, and then here you have uh, the path uh, to the to the input uh, file that you want to use inside the, the model. So um, one, once you have uh, created this this uh, file dot uh, uh, you can just, for example, in MATLAB, you just use the system command. Then you give the path to the executable of Valley, which is called valleauto.x. And then you say which is the, the file that he has uh, to use for that, the FIF file, okay, with all the definition F. And then this will run Valley and will save, depending on, on what you write here. For example, if here uh, you write um, this, runs uh, slash uh, 365 results.txt. It means that uh, you run, you're running um, Valley inside uh, a MATLAB, uh, I mean, inside a folder in which you have your MATLAB code. So it will uh, use this file and uh, store the results into a folder inside the same directory, which is called runs, and then inside it, uh, you store, like, you will store the result. So, yes. So, this is actually not all of you probably will use that because in reality you don't need that. This is a way to automatize like things. As I told you, you have your the, the measurement that you have the measurement uh, um, file is like that. It means that you have you have to run twelve times uh, your model, right? Because you have uh, twelve different data sets. So you can do it by end. It's quite annoying, I would say. So it's better to do it in MATLAB. So what you have to do is basically to do something like that and run this command 12 times, right? Yes. And this is the kind of output that you will, you will be able to show. It's like basically here the, the blue line is the measured value, the, the red line is the reconciled value. You see there, for example, in, in winter, uh, there is kind of uh, quite a remarkable difference between the two. 
it means that there is probably a bias error inside the sensor. So, that's all. If you have questions. But you will you will have three weeks to do it. And in reality you have already kind of good part of the model. You just need to do the APA. So you have time to understand it. I don't know if everybody already follow uh, the instructions that TV brought about how to study virtual machines. Did you do it? No. Okay, so you will do it today. <laughs> so yes, you can start like following those instructions because you can use Valley. Uh, it's better to use Valley in the virtual machines that we provide to you, and then you will start actually with Valley. Yes. In the group of what? Yeah, we need to be on the con of the EPFL and we need to be in the group to install it at first. And so I read on the okay. description. But I, how do we do it? Because um, can you come to me after? Yeah. It's better, yes. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so you can start uh, working this part. Good.